Okay, so as the title of the video has mentioned, when do you take E-Build of Alarak? He just got some buffs to his E-Build, so his level 4 talent negatively charged has gone from 3% per stack to 5%, which is a huge buff, it's almost double of what it was, which is amazing. Now, you will still take this build in the same situation as before. It just feels less punishing to take it, because before you would need a lot of stacks for the damage to actually be noticeable or to be relevant. But now you need less stacks to actually reach that point. So when do you take this? One, you cannot be solo laning. You need to be in the four man for this build. You need to be stacking as soon as you get your level four. Yes, you can stack on the solo laner, but if they're onto you, if they if they're actually looking at talents, they can dodge this. They can make you avoid doing this, depending on who the solo laner is. So, and to be honest, you're taking taking the level one talent extended lightning, which reduces your sadism even more, and that's not the solo laning build anyway. So you want to be in a four man. The four man, uh, it doesn't matter what your team consists of. It doesn't. That's not entirely relevant. The enemy team comp is what, the, what is most important. The enemy team comp is always going to have a tank. The tank is the most important part. The frontliners are the most important part. Melee assassins, uh, bruisers, tanks, uh, melee supports. This is what you're looking for. You want to get that center damage on them in order to actually stack. But that's that's how you stack. Uh, and eventually you get to a point with the stacks that the damage is huge. The damage is really nice when you get to about 35 stacks. It really depends on your sadism anyway. Another thing to quickly mention, the map is really relevant as well. Maps that have vehicles such as uh, Dragonshire, Garden of Terror, these are even better to take um, e-build because there's always going to be this fat thing right in front of your face that you're going to be able to stack on. Maps like Warhead Junction, um, you could do that, but Warhead Junction is more small skirmish, 1v1 based, and it rarely ever gets to... I mean, you do have t big team fights eventually, but there's not as many as other maps. So, think of the map before uh, picking E-Build as well as the enemy team composition. So, why would you take this over Q-Build? Well, because it infinitely stacks. Q-Build is still good, It's still it's not wrong to take it. But if you are in that situation where you know you're going to be stacking a lot, why not go for the t uh, the build that actually does more damage? And when you get to level 16 with Lightning Barrage, oof, <laughs> just forget about it. The, the, the front line, the melee assassins, or whoever, you, you know what, you may even just hit the ranged here as well, depending on you know what is going on in the in a team fight or, or wherever they are. So the damage is always relevant. Your Q is still there. Just because you haven't gone Q build, it still does a lot of damage. It still silences them. You can still do combo. So that's all fine. But now you've got a ranged ability, which is um, hitting probably just as hard as your Q, or if not more. Um, so yeah, if you are... And you know what? It also helps you as the Alarak player, uh, because you should always be looking for that center damage anyway. That's, that's your goal as the Alarak player, to just get better at that as well. There's these little things that make you... A better player and that's with all heroes not just Alarak. So I hope that kind of covers the questions that people have had whether e-build is meta or when do you take it is it even good uh, yeah so I'll, I'll leave it there if there's anything that I've meant uh, sorry forgotten to mention then just let me know in the comments come to my twitch uh, ask me there whatever ask on my discord yeah any questions just let me know and I'll see you guys next time